Hi everyone, back in Turkey. I've been in Budapest, Hungary for the last two months from June to August. And during my last days in Budapest, I bought, I bought this. I bought this membrane PS2 cabled keyboard. You can see it's, it's old school. And I'm like, why did I buy this? Brought this back in the luggage with me and I have three extra keyboards I don't use and then I bought another one I was like okay what can I do to make this a keyboard I'm gonna use even though it's old as hell so to be exact this is the Ciccone KB9810 and it's a membrane rubber dome keyboard from back in the day and I bought this for 200 Hungarian forints which is exactly 60 euro cents Yep, so this was a bargain. The only problem is it had the Quart Z, the Z used to be here. I switched that out and it's got a bunch of these extra keys, um, which I don't need. And it was actually much, much filthier when I first got it. It was completely disgusting, full of filth. I completely took it apart, took the plastic pieces, not the electronic pieces, to the shower and washed it out and it's still pretty dirty. And I can't get rid of this yellow tint it has, which I don't really like that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart again and I'm going to paint it with plastic use spray paint. And I'm going to be painting the letters one color, the special like, you know, windows key, escape key, all that like a bright orange so that way it'll look really cool and I like the membrane feel I don't really have any mechanical keyboards all my keyboards are membrane and I kind of like it actually um, I'm not a big fan of mechanical keyboards I mean I like them but this feels just fine to me now you may be asking um, if I paint this whole keyboard I'm not gonna have any of the labels and that's kind of what the point is I want to not see the labels so I can learn how to touch type a little bit better. I already sort of touch type on my current keyboard, which is a Corsair keyboard. I don't know the exact number. I think it's this K65 Raptor, I think. But, you know, it has a, a RGB and everything and at night, you know, glows and I can see the keys and I don't really want that. I want to be able to type without looking. So that's why I actually don't want these labels. Also, these labels are completely misleading because in the English version of the keyboard, the zero is not here, the zero is actually here, but in the Hungarian version it's there. And also in the Hungarian version, the Z and Y are normally flipped the other way around, but you know, I flipped it back because who the hell has Quart Z? And I'm gonna color some of the special keys bright orange so I can tell the difference, and I'll also have these little ridges on the middle of the FNJ. So it's gonna be completely matte black. It's going to be much nicer looking with orange accents. And it also has these nice buttons that I can turn my computer on and off with without needing to go all the way to my computer and press the on button. I can just sit down on my desk and press that and it will work. And so that's why I kind of like this keyboard. I got a free USB port. It's not like I use them all, but you know, PS2 is kind of like a nostalgic port. And I'm like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to say like, yo guys, I got a PS2 keyboard, isn't that cool? Also, BIOS immediately sees PS2, it doesn't see USB all the time, so sometimes it'll give you that error where it's like, can't find keyboard, press F10 to continue, and you, you know, you don't have a keyboard, but this will work instantly, you don't need to have, this is a direct input, it's not a digital input in a way. It's not exactly a good description of it, but you know. Now you notice that the keyboard isn't painted yet, and that's because I actually have to go buy the spray paint, so let's go do that. That might have been like two seconds for you, but that was like two hours for me looking for matte black spray paint. And from shop to shop, I couldn't find any matte black until the third shop. Now it's time to take this apart. So this is sort of what a membrane keyboard looks like under. Now if you look, you can see that there's these little like nipple-like things and these are called rubber domes and under them is 
the sensors that sense, you know, whenever you press on something. So you could actually press on these and, you know, feel the keys and it's like a touchpad. So, yeah, and this one is going to make it like, you know, press down but with a with a actual push back on the keys. And then here are the individual keys themselves on the front board on the front plastic. So, these are the parts we're going to be painting this part. Uh, I don't think I'll be painting this part yet. For painting, I would recommend a shoebox cover, and then I would get some tape, and I would line them up for each row of keys so they wouldn't be blowing away when I use the spray paint. Now, to take out the keys, I would flip this around, and I would use a screwdriver and just individually pop them out like that, and then put it in like that. Of course, if it stays. That's what I get for using cheap tape. Okay, so I figured out that electric tape is a lot stronger. I mean, not much, but a lot stronger than the other tape. Okay, so these are the, all the special keys I want to paint neon red. And then the rest of them I'll paint matte black. Alright, so it's been half an hour since my last coat, which was the third and final coat, and now I'm going to take it all in and I'm going to put it back together. Alright, so here is the front body, the front plastic body, and now I'm going to put in the first parts of it. Everything. Okay, I got all the keys in now, but I need to, I actually got, I, the caps lock is not completely painted, so actually I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to use just black permanent marker on this side because I can't bother letting this dry, so I'm going to do that right now. And now, it's pretty good. Now let's just put the keyboard back together. Alright, yeah, this is the finished product. Of course, because of the paint is still on the body and everything, the keys are a little bit rigid. They're a little bit harder to press than they are normally. But you know, after 
after a day of use, it's going to pretty much go back to normal because all the paint is going to be used up. This keyboard, the space bar is already back to normal. Um, it's a bit harder than it is than usual for sure. I can feel it. Um, but yeah, a bit of use and it'll be back to normal. So let's plug it in. Just a friendly reminder, if you have a PS2 keyboard and you want it to work on your computer, you can't just hot swap, you can't just plug it in while it's on, it will not work. You have to turn your computer off, plug it in, and then turn it back on, and then it'll work. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage of PS2, but you know, I'm willing to take that. And it also has these cool buttons where I can put it to sleep and turn it on and everything quickly, which I like. Overall, I kind of like the stealth aesthetic. It, you know, it's still a bit stiff. I got a type on it, but I actually like how it looks. So yeah, that's how I made a keyboard that is old, dirty, into this nice stealth keyboard. Another thing I saw is that on the inside of the keyboard, I saw a date that wrote 1998. So this is a 20 year old keyboard that I just sort of refurbished. I'm just gonna get centered. I refurbished a 20 year old keyboard that I'm gonna be using now. It's gonna be interesting. Also, while I was spray painting the body, I got this awesome image on the cardboard. It looks like this. I think that actually looks pretty cool. Um, I might refurbish the cardboard as bonus content and hang it on the wall. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, consider checking out my other videos on my channel. And if you want to see more of my videos that I'm going to be uploading in the future, you can click on the subscribe button. Alright, see you later. Alright, let's do some bonus content.